I was waiting for the theme song. Okay. Thank you. That's what I was waiting for. Thank you. I feel complete now. Thank you. What? <laughs> Oh. <laughs> How many is this their first service for this conference? <laughs> oh, quite a few. Well, you guys have been here. I know, that's okay. I was asking if anybody was this is the first time for this conference. There's quite a few. So, um, it's been an amazing time. So, we just released to you guys everything that has been happening this weekend. Just assimilate it in the spirit so that you can catch up. We just say in the name of Jesus, you catch up because we're going to do what, keep going, see what the Lord was going to do. And uh, I, I really truly believe he's already done great things and mighty things. And I believe he's going to do spectacular things tonight. Is anybody else feeling that? Okay. So I'm not the only one. Okay. Out of the mouth of two, three witnesses. Here we go. Okay. Three, four. Okay. Double, double. Here we go. So in the name of Jesus, I just welcome every one of you. I welcome the host of the Lord of hosts. I welcome the earthly saints. I welcome your anointings, your giftings, and your callings. We welcome you in this place. We ask that you feel at home. We ask that you worship the Holy Spirit. Worship God in any way Holy Spirit tells you to. We have flags in the front. We have dancing. We ask that you watch your space. We don't want to have the ministry of whack around here. So please just that you are welcome to worship. Then we ask that you worship. We don't want um, spectators. We're not a spectator sport. We are participatory. Hey, that, I got that out. Cool. So got that out. So we just welcome the earthly saints. We welcome the angelic ones. We welcome the ones that are stationed here. We welcome the ones that are visiting. We welcome all of, all of the angelic ones. We ask that you guys feel at home and minister with us to accomplish all that Holy Spirit would have us accomplish this night. We welcome the cloud of witnesses, those who've gone before. We honor them. We honor their wisdom and their encouragement and that they would be able to worship with us also. And most, most of all, you know, if God doesn't show up, then we're wasting time. And any time that we're not focusing on him, we're wasting time. Yeah. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't have any more time to waste. Hallelujah. So let's just set our eyes on the Lord. Lord, right now, we just come into alignment with you. We come into alignment with your kingdom. We come into alignment with heaven on earth, earth to heaven. We thank you, Lord. We worship you, the three in one. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Blow in any way that you want to blow tonight, Lord. We just open ourselves to you and to you alone. We open ourselves, our essence to you, Lord. And we just say, have your will in this way. Lord, we ask that we don't grieve you in any way, but Lord, that we just work with you and follow with you. That everything that's been written on the scroll from eternity's past will be accomplished in this time. Every dot, every tittle, nothing will be left unsaid, nothing will be left undone. But Lord, everything will be accomplished that we may please our Father. Jesus, we acknowledge you. We acknowledge your life, your death, and your resurrection. We acknowledge you as King of kings and Lord of lords. You, Lord, you don't have our you, you don't have to have our permission, but but we freely give our free will and our free acknowledgement that you are our King of kings and Lord of lords. We lift you up. We honor you, Jesus. We worship you. You are our God. We worship you, Lord. We worship the Creator God, the one who sits high upon the throne, the one who rides the wings of the cherubim, the one whose voice thunders. We worship God, Almighty One, the Living One. We do not worship a God who is dead. We worship a God who is living. You are the Mighty One. You are the Great I Am. You are the one in the beginning. You are the one in the end. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. You are the Mighty God, and we worship you. Lord, there is no one like you. There is no one like you, and we will worship you. We call you holy. We call you holy. We call you holy.
you at now? Yeah. Shut down. Oh! 
restoration of all things all that has been lost and that that has not been opened Restoration of all things from the beginning before the beginning. Restoration. Restoration.
we're breaking through Cause our God is on the moon We're breaking through We're breaking through Cause our God is on the moon We're breaking through We're breaking through Cause our God is on the moon We're breaking through We're breaking through Cause our God is on the moon Our breakers here 
the kingdom. Glorious time in the kingdom. Ah, oh, I tell you, we hit a tipping point, and then we tipped over. <laughs> that was good. I like that. Yeah, we tipped over into Jesus, and the enemy tipped off into the abyss. So that was really good. Whoa. Hallelujah. We had a breakthrough tonight. I felt like something really it was liberated in our praise and our worship. That was just wonderful. Thank you guys so much. Awesome. Well, now. <laughs> Here we are at the... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> very well done. That's <laughs> very well said. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, the enemy knows better than to show up at the OK Corral. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, I always wanted to go there, so finally made it tonight. The OK Corral. <laughs> ah, I'm feeling pretty good tonight. How about y'all? Yeah, feeling pretty good. Well, anyway, um, I want to share the word with you tonight. Bring a word out of Luke chapter 10. Hallelujah. Everybody like Luke? I like Luke. <laughs> yep. Luke will help you not puke. That's what they tell me. They like the rhyme. <laughs> I love you, Joanne. Oh, you're awesome. Oh, man. All right. 1948. What an incredible year, right? Yes. Well, you know, if you were born in 1948, I won't ask anybody in here if they were born in 1948. But if you were born in 1948, this year you'll be 70 years old. Now, to help some of you younger folks, back in 1948, Tupperware became a real deal thing. <laughs> the debut of Tupperware. Whew. And we're still partying about it today. Wow. That's, uh... Now, for those of you wired like my home slice here, the jukebox came out in 1948. So, thank God that we have live music now, although I did enjoy the jukebox. Sitting at the NW for lunch and throwing a quarter in, seeing what came on. Nobody knows anything about that in here, do they? A few people. Ah, you see. Y'all have Dairy Queen or NW or whatever, Frosty King or some kind of. Help me, Jesus, place to eat lunch. Okay. <laughs> Lots of stuff happened in 1948 that brought us here to this time, which is 70 years later. I think uh, one of my favorite movies happened in 1948 because it's kind of been my logo of my life and ministry ever since. And uh, it, was out of the, it was a quote out of the movie, Treasures of the Sierra Madre. If anybody was back watching that movie in 1948. But there was a line that came out of that movie that I quote often today. It's one of my favorite lines. And it was spoken by O. Alfonso Bedoya. You remember the line? It went like this. Badges? We ain't got no badges. We don't need no badges. And I don't have to show you any stinking badges. <laughs> I love that line. We don't need no stinking badges. Blazing Saddles brought it back. A few other movies. So if you hear that line, that, that came out, you know, <laughs> seven years ago. And, uh, yeah, we don't need no stinking badges. Anyway, one of my favorites. So I often say that when I'm confronted with or challenged in my authority to do something. Amen. I don't need no stinking badges. You'd be surprised how much authority you have as a son and daughter of God on earth that you're not aware of. It, it would stun you, really, because we're from a higher authority, a higher kingdom. Everything of the kingdom of God that we're from supersedes the kingdom here. And uh, we're coming into that revelation, and uh, we're coming into 
uh, what I began to sing during that revelatory period there, realms of revelation, season of impartation, the church in activation, that's where we're coming into. It's just a good thing. Just, yeah, it's, it was, but I liked it, and it was the Lord. And I was just thinking of that. Those things kept going in my mind. So we're coming into a time, a new season, and we're 70 years forward from some very important things. But I want to talk to you more specifically tonight about the number 70 and what it means biblically and the significance of, of it for us today. If you were here this morning, I mentioned that the number 70 is significant this year. It, not last year. It will be some next year. But this year, the number 70 biblically is super important for us to understand. And God communicates to us prophetically in many different ways, you know, through signs, through uh, this thing or that thing, and through numbers and through revelations, through many different things. So I, I believe that 70 is one of the uh, numbers that he's having us pay attention to this year. So a little bit of background on the number 70. It actually occurs 50 times in the Old Testament. That's a lot of times. Now, here's the shocking thing. It occurs only two times in the New Testament. Fifty times in the Old Testament, two times in the New Testament. So if it occurs only two times in the New Testament, I'm going to pay attention to those two times. I'm going to really lock in and say, what is going on? Because of the law first mentioned in the Old Testament, when 70s mentioned, the law first mentioned, if you are a Bible student, you know that meaning carries forward into the New Testament, right? That's how we s interpret the Bible without getting ourselves into a lot of trouble sometimes. Sometimes we get in trouble anyway, but at least we have the law interpretation. So with that understanding, I, I want to read Luke 10, 1 through 2, and I want to begin to break down the significance of this number 70. And I want to show you, I'm just going to kind of re just lay out an encounter I had with the Lord a while back not too long ago about the number 70 because I was kind of dismissing it. And I thought, well, that's cool. And the number 70, and I was hearing a little bit about it here and there. But then the Lord shows up and he says, I'm going to tell you the significance of the number 70. And I now have given that number my full attention because when the Spirit of the Lord shows up and wants to give you a lesson on a number, how many know you better pay attention? It's a good idea. And I was, I was so happy. I was so thrilled. I mean, honestly, who is not absolutely just totally so thankful for any encounter, any word, any whisper, any utterance of the Lord, any presence of the Lord? Hallelujah. I just feel the Lord <laughs> on that. But I got to tell you, the most important thing that the Lord is interested in right now with you more than anything else is that you love his presence, that you love it. I mean, like you want it, like you make an effort to be in it, his presence. Everything that happens that's good and, and, and of faith and of purpose comes out of those presence times. Otherwise, you'll get yourself into all the kind of things. And guys, I'm talking about intimacy with the Lord. I'm talking about being in love with the Lord Jesus. I'm talking about loving his presence, loving the presence of the Holy Spirit in you and upon you, loving every little revelation, every large revelation, every encounter, every visitation. You know, that's what we live for. That's our, that's our, that's our home. That's our Father. That's our King. That's our Savior. That's our realm. Hallelujah. That we should be more comfortable with than this realm. We should be uncomfortable in this realm. Come on, this realm is heaven for the sinners and hell for the saints. It's going to switch one of these days, but right now, it's, this is heaven for sinners. They like it. The number 70, it's important. That was, I don't know what I did. I just went off on something, didn't I? <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, get back to 70. Was that was that, that rabbit? Shoot that rabbit. You like rabbits? I, I felt the Lord on that, so I just went with it, right? Yeah. Yeah, because you never know. You might get a mid-change of message, you know. Just go with it. I'd rather the Lord preach than me preach any day. Trust me. <laughs> Thank you, sister. <laughs> Amen. All right. <laughs> no, she's right. Okay. Uh, 
boy, there's a nice joyful spirit up here. I want to kind of laugh and roll around and frolic and play and, yeah, is it? Yeah, it was. It got opened up. Yeah, felt the breakthrough. And I'm liking it. Okay. Focus, Randy. <laughs> Luke chapter 10, verse 1. <laughs> yeah, don't do that, Steve. We'll be, I'll be a mess before the night somewhere. <clears throat> I probably already am. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a witness? Huh? It is, yeah. Hard to stand and think and talk and walk at the same time at this moment. <laughs> Maybe this is what heaven's all about. You just don't care. <laughs> hey, how are you? Fine. How are you? Fine. Fine. Yeah. Want to do something? No, I'm good. Stop it. Mm. Yeah, well, just get a big drink of the Holy Ghost. It'll do you really a lot of good. <clears throat> I'm holding Caleb personally responsible. Yeah, that's right. Walk away. Hmm. You know, we should just do that for a minute. I like that. Let's just uh, praise the Lord or speak into your prayer language for a minute. It's really good. Seriously. Oh, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Love the Lord. Worship the King. Blessed be the Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Show Rameke Kiti Tida da Barabasotaraba. Shunkura Mahati Tirosumaha. Bere Makita Raba Borana Satara Bekirata Barra Makita Bara Shukura Masataraba. Dear Ramadaraba Karaba. Hurubu Shukura Masataraba. Hara Makura Masatari Bedi Araba. Hura Masukura Mahana Kura Besataraba. Shekiti Uroma. Ha hallelujah. Realms of heavenly beings, of angels, glory, power, <laughs> and grace be to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. See, that feels better already, doesn't it? That's good. Well, the Lord is really doing something here tonight. Wonderfully good. Probably far among, uh, <laughs> above what I could <laughs> talk about. <laughs> I got gold stuff landing on my Bible, on my notes, like strands, gold thread. That's a, kind of a new thing. What kind of gold threads? Gold threads. That's how I give me some of them. Yeah. Okay. Be that way. Here we go. 70. 70 gold threads. That'd be a sign and a wonder, wouldn't it? 70 gold threads. Let it be, Lord. Amen. Yeah. Anyway, here we go. 70, the number 70. We're going to try this one more time, okay? After that, we don't care if it goes south. We're just going to go over to Wendy's and get a burger or something. Hey, bacon mushroom Swiss at Whataburger. Y'all got a Whataburger here? Ha, 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 ha. Is that it? Yeah. It's big enough you can share if you want to, but you don't have to. <laughs> Bacon, mushroom, Swiss. Hmm. All right, let's get back to number 70 because it's really important that we talk about it tonight. <laughs> Here we go. Luke chapter 10, verse 1. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also, and he sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into the harvest and go your way. Behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. 
Now we have the number 70 occurring there, which is very important. And we'll break that down and talk about that. But I also want to just share something with you, I think on a personal note, because I'm not very personal with too many people. So I'll be personal tonight. <laughs> I don't let too many people in. As my friends will attest, I have a tight-knit inner circle. <laughs> I like it that way. But anyway... This last year or two, I have been in this very unusual place with the Lord. I mean, it's like quiet, and then it's like inactivity, and then it's like, Lord, are you there? And then he's like, yes, I'm here. And then it's like, okay, what are we doing? And he's like, whatever you want to be doing. And I'm like, what does that mean? And uh, then you read the Bible, and it's like, Wow, not much popping off the page today. What's that, Lord? I want you to rest. I want you to quiet yourself down. I want you to be released of all your motion and travel and weariness and struggles. And I'm like, that is the hardest thing in the planet, at least for people who are like me, to do. When the Lord tells you, I'm going to slow you down and give you a rest. I'm like, Lord, I don't have time for a rest. Don't you know I'm getting older and your kingdom's coming and we got things to do. And I, you know, what's this rest deal? Don't you, aren't you going to sustain me in all that? Come on, you've asked that question, haven't you? I get this call from Reese a couple of years ago. You know, John Paul's guy. And uh, he starts telling me a story. I said, what you been up to? He said, oh, man, I've just been like the Lord just kind of has had me in a time of rest. Now, see, I'm an old pastor and so forth, and I'm thinking, that's an excuse for wanting to be carnal for a while. <laughs> Not true, but you know, yeah. terrible thoughts come in your head. Now, here's the other super dangerous thought that I have said to myself. This is a self-confession night, I'm trying to help myself. And if you get help, glory be to God. When you're, you're, you're just thinking these thoughts, and this is the first thought that I think about some people that I have seen struggle with the Lord or struggle with this or, you know, just issues, you know, or doing things that at one time I thought were inappropriate to do and now I found that are not necessarily inappropriate and so forth and so on. But anyway, I would say I would never do that. How do they do that? I would never do that. How could they possibly be close to Jesus and do that? And what really would irritate me is that they seem to be closer to Jesus than I was and they were doing that. I'm thinking, are they the liberator of me? Come on, you're right. You're trying to help me out. So, been through this season. And I said, Lord, what is up with this season? It's like, I feel like I need to be going, but you're telling me not to go. I want some revelation. You said, be content in what you have. You know, I'm trying to do this. He's, you're saying, don't do that. I want to go here. You say, no going there. I'm like, Lord, what is up? I do not get this. The Lord just basically straight out said to me, I'm teaching you how to rest. And I'm like, I don't want to rest. And he said, that's why I'm teaching you to rest. You don't know how to rest. And I said, but Lord. And he said, I am the Lord. That's right. Right? And, you know, sometimes you think it's up to us to conquer the entire world and win it for Jesus and get everybody saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and being the Christian of the very most. But anyway, <laughs> he has other people that can help. Did you know that? Yeah. And in the scheme of things, maybe you aren't as important as you think you are or uh, you know, whatever. But the point is, he was teaching me how to rest and is teaching me how to rest. And finally, about eight months ago, he gave me this scripture and I was, I was reading through the Psalms. I was reading, you know, all the way through the Psalms. And I came to Psalms 23, and he said, that's yours until I say so. 
So I'm reading the, the, the first line. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He says, do you want? And I said, yeah. He said, then I'm not your shepherd in that area. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I get it. If I have a want, he's not my shepherd in that area. Are you with me? Because if the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want. That means something or someone is trying to satisfy or something, right? Lesson number one. So we, he taught me that lesson. The next thing is, remember, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall want. What's he do? He, huh? He leans or makes or what? He can make you lie down? <laughs> I'm here to tell you. He can make you lie down. Now, the cool thing about God is that it is in green pastures. Hallelujah. So I'm lying down in green pastures. He leads me beside the cool, still, refreshing water. He restores my soul. He leads me about the righteousness for his namesake, right? Why? Because when you walk through the valley of shadow of death, then you'll fear no evil, right? For the rod and the staff that comfort me. And then guess what happens when you pass that little brief period of time? Hey, it's feasting time in front of your enemies, and there's nothing they can do about it. Fresh oil, fresh anointing, breakthrough, right? So I'm in this season, and uh, it's very uncomfortable for me, and I'm, I believe I'm right in the very end of it, about to come into something new. And, uh, but I have determined that I'm not going to make that declaration <laughs> until the Lord shows me. But anyway, I feel like I'm getting there. The Lord has been teaching me how to rest, how to rely upon him, how to slow down, how to enjoy other things that perhaps busyness and all these things has kept me from enjoying or those things in your life, those bumps and whatever bruises you need some time just to, you know, inhale, exhale, you know, kind of thing. So I've been in this place and uh, I said, Lord, why are you making me rest? And and uh, he said, because, he said, you need to rest and because I'm your father and I'm your Lord and I want you to rest and I want you just to enjoy my provision, my protection. I want you to know I'm that good, really, yeah. right? I'm that good. And so I was good with all that. And then recently, more recently, just recently, he began to deal with me about this number 70. And uh, this is something that really personally caught my attention. Because if you look here in context of Luke 10, he says, go your way, verse 3, behold, I send you out as lambs among wolves. And the Lord says, your time in Psalms 23, your time of me teaching you how to rest, your time of having me be your shepherd, what I was and am doing to you is I'm teaching you how to be a lamb so you can be effective among the wolves. Right now, you are like a wolf among the wolves. Right? So he's making me be a lamb. Because he's sending me out not as a wolf among wolves, not as a self-reliant, self-taught, pull up myself by the bootstraps, out, shoot you out, gun you out, knife you out, talk you, whatever. Christian. Are you with me? He's sending me out completely vulnerable to that which I'm going to go talk to. But at the same time, he's my shepherd. Whom I shall not want. Right? In other words, he's sending me out. And this is the cool part. As a lamb whom the wolf thinks he has superior over, superiority over. Therefore, he's willing to have interaction with me. But there's this thing that God's going to do with the lamb. There happens to be some more verses to chapter 10. You want to read a couple of them? Jump over here to verse 17. It says, Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. Hey, 
You know the thing about being a lamb of God is that you're not any ordinary lamb. You are a supernatural lamb with power over demons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's it. <laughs> Are you getting some of that? Now, that's not my message, but that, there's a lot in there if you'll just think about that, about being a lamb among the wolves. Think about being a lamb whom the Lord is your shepherd, so you shall not want. Think about that lamb in that context, about being a lamb that way. Instead about being a superior person going out to convert some sinner. Are you with me? How about being a lamb of God, redeemed by God, to convert the wolf into a lamb? Who else has the power to do that? Wow, even make the lions lay down with the lamb. I'm just overwhelmed with that, that God would care enough about me that he'd slow me down, make me rest, readjust some of my theology and my thinking because he wants me to be a lamb because of what's coming. We're about to be exposed to the wolves, but we're going to be an effective lamb among the wolves because we're going to be supernatural lambs in the midst of wolves. We're going to be wise as serpents, but gentle as doves in the form of a Lamb. Why did God send the Lamb of God into the earth? And why do we think we can be something else and have his kind of ministry? <laughs> Jesus, help us. So I've been on this journey. Now, I'm not declaring you're going to go on that journey, but if you happen to walk down that trail, I hope you have a little more peace in it in the beginning than I did, because I fought it. I fought it so much that I was trying to get things back up and rolling in some of my areas of ministry and things, so much so that I was getting into so much frustration and exhaustion that I thought I was going to, you know, just blow up. And finally, my wife came to me one day, you know, the other Holy Spirit. <laughs> <clears throat> the other vessel of the Holy Spirit. And she says, can I just say something to you that your daughter and I think? <laughs> I'm like, oh, double barrel, here we go. I mean, she, she had to throw in the daughter, right? You know, y'all know my middle daughter who works in our ministry? She's, anyway. So she's up to speed on me. She goes, we don't think you're fighting against the devil. We think you're fighting God. We think you need to chill out, get off the road, take a rest, and then see what's next. I'm like, <laughs> who do you think you are, Tully? I'm thinking, you're the spirit of the Lord telling me when I'm too dull of hearing to hear on my own. <laughs> so guess what? It's okay if you become a lamb and take a rest. It's really okay. I'll tell you the other thing that peels off of you is this whole unspoken pressure that I was telling Steve about today that's in the church and in the whole pastoral and leadership circles of having to be someone and get something done and maintaining a certain level of this or that or you're a nobody. Man, it'll peel that right off of you. Maybe not by choice, but before God's done with you, you'll be like, bah, bah, bah. I'd be rather do be going than stressing over a $10 million a month payment. Anyway, the 70. Amazing word. Seven represents, right? Perfect. Or a perfection or a completeness. Seven times 10. 10 represents completeness of the law, right? So we have a perfection in the sense of completeness and also 
70 is related not only to perfection, but perfection or completion of the law. In other words, it would break down kind of like this, perfect spiritual order carried out with perfect spiritual power. Perfect spiritual order carried out with perfect spiritual power. Now, here's another thing about 70. Mm -hmm. 70 is the duration of the effect of a generation. In other words, we are coming to the end of the effect of a generation. 70 years ago. Interestingly enough, the latter rain revival was 70 years ago. So we're, we, we, that generation had an effect on us, built things into us, spoke into our spirit, man, established foundations, truth, all sorts of things, mostly all good. Some things a little quirky we need to deal with. But anyway, here we are, ready for a new influence and breakthrough and expression and manifestation of the kingdom as a new generation ready to bring forth and carry that into this next period of time to raise up not only ourselves, but the generation that's among us and the generation that's coming. I think that's pretty significant. I think it's not without significance either that we all know that Billy Graham passed on. End of a generation. End of a time of influence. So many prophecies concerning him and his passing and what that would mean to us. What it means to me is that that was a certain style of evangelism that was effective in that time, but will not be effective in this time. Let's just say it, okay? That's not a takeaway from Billy Graham. That's just a truth. That's a reality. God bless Billy Graham and his family for all he did for the Lord. Now here's another key that's really something important. Actually, what I'm kind of driving at tonight is 70 is connected to, to uh, Israel and to Jerusalem. And that's probably going to be the significance of the impact of the number 70 for us for this year. <laughs> the city of Jerusalem kept seven, 70 Sabbaths, right? Which Judah was in captivity for 70 years for breaking. So we have that number 70 there again. So my takeaway from that is, number one, you know, don't come under judgment if you will, for breaking things that the Lord said not to break. But at the end of 70 years, this is my takeaway, a captive generation is set free. So I believe we're coming to this period of time that the generation that came up in 1948, if there's bondages and things that have held them captive, this is the year of freedom, of liberation, right? Where they come and they go back to what? Restore the presence of the Lord, restore the house of the Lord, right? I believe we're in the beginnings, the birthing of a movement to restore the presence, the true, pure presence of the Lord in the house of the Lord. And I believe, if you will, it's only going to be a remnant that will get it and begin it. That's how it works in the beginning. Not that more won't come, but there's just going to be a remnant that is going to hear this and begin to restore the altar, restore the purity of the altar. Restore the place of holiness. Come on. Restore the foundations. And then begin to restore the walls and the house. Restore the offerings unto the Lord, the pure, the holy offerings. Come on. A reset generation, a restoration generation. A couple of things about 70 that are really interesting to me. Genesis 5, 12, Canaan lived 70 years and begat his first son. 70 years has to do with birthing, bringing forth the first fruits. Genesis eleven twenty six. 26, Terah lived 70 years and begot Abraham. See the pattern? Here comes Abraham after 70 years. Genesis 10, very important tonight. Ten descendants of Noah began the building and the restoration of the nations. In Genesis 10, if you read it, 10 people began the rebuilding of all the humanity, right? And uh, it says there in Genesis 10 that out of those 10 people, if you will, out of those, uh, out of those uh, people that went forth, that um, 70 nations come forth. 
Now, the importance of that is the law first mentioned, the Lord recognized 70 nations in the earth. Are you with me? Now, I say that because we say, well, there's a lot more nations in the world today. Well, you can say a lot more nations in the world today, and I get that, and I understand it, but in the eyes of the Lord, by the law first, ma first mentioned, there are 70 core nations that represent all the people in the earth. So when you're talking about nations biblically, you're talking about the number 70. 70 represents every nation, tribe, and tongue. 70 represents every nation. Are you with me? Get that in your mind. 70. Law of first mention, Genesis 10. 70. All right? It's important that we understand that. Now, Exodus 1, 5, it says that Jacob had 70 offspring of who he brought to Egypt at the, as the beginnings of the Israelite people. Exodus 24, 1, Abihu and the 70 elders went up the mountain with Moses and Joshua. They saw God. 70 represents a full religious order. Interestingly enough, the 70 elders when God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, the 70 went up with him. Here's an interesting one. This ought to be an offering scripture. I like it. Numbers 713, in dedication of the altar, a leader from each of the 12 tribes of Israel gave a silver bowl weighing 70 shekels in the offering. Each of them did. I don't know how much 70 shekels is, but I promise you, you get upgrade. Be one of the 12. Judges 9, 5, Gideon had 70 sons, all who were killed by Abimelech. After Gideon's death, they all wanted to be the uncontested judge of Israel. So Abimelech killed all 70 of them so he could be the uncontested judge. Now here's where things went wrong. So Abimelech, he's still trying to be the uncontested judge in Gideon's place, rides in to do war with this city, and a woman drops a millstone off the edge of the wall onto his head and kills him. Never underestimate the power of a woman to take out the usurped head of authority. Hey. There it is. Jeremiah 25, 11. Jeremiah prophesied Judah's 70 years of Babylonian captivity for breaking the 70 Sabbaths to the Lord. And then Daniel 9 Daniel knew from Jeremiah's prophecies the seven years of captivity were nearly complete and began to intercede for their release and return. I think there's a key for us here. We're at a 70-year period, and it's time to intercede and understand there's a change coming. There's a release coming. There's a restoration coming, and we need to be establishing ourselves and listening to the Lord and interceding and praying for that purpose of the 70-year release to happen. That's what Daniel did. He knew the significance of the 70 years as it related to Israel. And I'm going to tell you tonight about the significance of 70 years as it relates to Israel. Amen. It's important. A couple New Testament scriptures, and then we'll jump into this thing. It's kind of fun. Matthew 18, 22, here's the two scriptures. Peter asked Jesus, how many times do I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Seven times, and Jesus said, 70 times seven. Now, for all you mathematicians, that adds up to 490 times. Now, I challenge each and every one of you to keep track of every time you have to forgive your brother and see if you can get to 490. Now, for some of you that are a little, you know, I don't even know what I want to say, but you know what I'm going to say, could actually do that, <clears throat> especially if you have an honorary brother. But anyway... The idea, the concept there is, of course, unlimited amounts, right? <clears throat> you never stop forgiving if they seek forgiveness. And you never stop forgiving even if they don't ask for forgiveness, right? You just forgive and move on. Get yourself free, you know? I love that song. Just hop on the bus, Gus. Don't need to discuss much. <laughs> just get yourself free. Don't need to be coy, Roy. Just listen to me. <laughs> He's got some good music. I like his role. It's... Anyway. Now, let's go to John 7. And 
In John 7, we're going to discover why in Luke 10, Jesus sent out the 70. <clears throat> and what I want to show you is that the number 70 is hidden in the Feast of Pentecost and the Feast of Tabernacles for a very important reason. And we're coming back upon that 70 mark, actually, like not very many days from now, the 14th of May, this month. And even Pentecost is this month. I mean, it's all like happening this month. A whole bunch of cool stuff. In the spring, yeah. Hey, in the spring. Did I say John chapter 8? I meant John chapter 7. Because I was reading John chapter 8, and I'm like, I must have been messed up when I wrote that up, because I can't understand it. John 7 is very interesting passage of scripture. I'll read the first eight verses and we'll unpack it. After these things, Jesus walked into Galilee. He did not want to walk in Judea because the Jews sought to kill him. <laughs> Could you imagine living like that? Anyway, verse two. Now the Jews' feast of tabernacles was at hand. His brothers therefore said to him, depart from here and go into Judea that your disciples may also see the works that you're doing. For no one does anything in secret while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers did not believe in him. Verse 6, then Jesus said to them, my time has not yet come. But watch this, everybody. Read it close. But your time is already. The world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify that its works are evil. You go up to this feast. I am not yet going up to the feast for my time has not yet fully come. Jesus is saying something to us here. He says, my time has not fully come, but your time is already. We need to be saying that to ourselves as often as we need to, that our time is already. We're not waiting for Jesus. He said, our time is already. He's waiting for us to go up, to go out. Are you there? <clears throat> Your time is already. Now, the Feast of Tabernacles that it speaks of here in verse 2, it's outlined in Numbers 29. I'm not going to go there, but you can read it sometime if you want to. The book of Numbers is a pretty cool book. But this is how the Feast of Tabernacles went. And this is where the number 70 is hidden. And this is part of the significance of this number 70 this year. <clears throat> For seven days, the people were to tabernacle with God by holy convocation, presenting specific burnt offerings given to the Lord as outlined in Scripture. Particularly, there were offerings of bulls and rams and goats and lambs, grain, flour, and personal things. But the thing that is amazing and that I want to draw your attention to is the offering or the sacrifice of the bulls. On day one, 13 bulls were to be offered, the first day of the Feast of Tabernacles. Now, you would think that would continue, right? Same amount of bulls every day, same amount of offering every day. No, the, the amount of bulls offered every day changed. On day two of the Feast of Tabernacles, right? Instead of offering 13 bulls, they offered 12. On the next day of the feast, instead of offering 12 bulls, they offered 11. If you follow that pattern, by day seven, they offered seven bulls. Now, here's the amazing thing. If you add up the total number of bulls offered during the Feast of Tabernacles, it comes to 70. Very interesting, isn't it? Very, very interesting. 70 bulls were offered. The other offerings remained the same, but 70 bulls were offered. Now, as we discovered, as I spoke about in Genesis chapter 10, 70 represents what? All nations, right? Every nation, tribe, and tongue. 70 is representative of all nations. So what they were doing in the Feast of Tabernacles is they were making an offering to God for every nation to be born again and to tabernacle with God. 
It was an offering for every nation. Remember, Israel is a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, right? Under God. The same thing that the church now is supposed to be, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. We are to be interceding for the nations. Is that right? So Israel was interceding with God, even though they were tabernacling with God, their sacrifice was, Lord, remember every nation needs to be tabernacling with you like we are tabernacling with you. Every nation is to have closeness and fellowship and intimacy with you the way we have closeness and fellowship and intimacy with you. That's in the Feast of Tabernacles. And that's why Jesus sent out the 70 two by two. What did the 70 represent in Luke chapter 10? Every nation. He sent out disciples to every nation. You go, how is that possible that he sent disciples out to every nation? Well, let's talk about the Feast of Pentecost. Do you remember what it says? I'll help you, I'll help you remember. I'll read you a couple of verses. Because the 70s tied to the Feast of Pentecost. And it says in Acts 1.5, it tells us that devout Jews from every Nation were present in Jerusalem to witness the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. So if you're catching this, every nation was present and represented in Jerusalem. So what I'm trying to tell you is God is after every nation. He's after every person, every tongue, every tribe. He's after every human being that he has created to be saved, born again, and brought into his kingdom. And he's had a continual sacrifice since the beginning of the feast, even in the Old Testament, to make an offering before him for the salvation of all nations. And he brought that whole concept forward in the New Testament, where he sends out how many? Seventy. And he sends them out how? Two by two to every place that he was about to go. Now, you know what that tells me? There's about to be a worldwide visitation of God in every nation. No nation is going to go without a witness and a testimony of the presence and power of God, of his salvation, of his deliverance, of his might and ability to save, of his mercy and his grace. Every nation is going to have that witness. They've already had it to some extent, right? Even the Bible says that Paul went to all the known places of the earth, but we know about more now, right? And the cool thing, if you remember from this morning, is we're now the uttermost generation. Yes. And our message is, hey, do you want to be saved to the uttermost? Hashtag uttermost. Sign up. I'll be right over. I know how you can be saved to the uttermost. I can't wait to see churches all up and down the street, uttermost fellowship, <laughs> uttermost gate, first uttermost, <laughs> the uttermost, the other uttermost. I was in such a small town one time that I went by this church. <laughs> it had so many names on it, I'm not sure who went there. <laughs> but it was the first St. John of the Brethren of the Church of Christ Fellowship Southern Congress of the United Methodist of the Pentecostal One Church. I mean, it was like, I just kept reading this thing about running off the road. I'm like... Who goes there? <laughs> That's true. Yeah, it, it was in a place, uh, some little town in Oregon that I was, we, I took a group of people and we went out and we evangelized five towns in one day. But I got to tell you, the town's really like a hundred people. But anyway, hey, cover the whole town in a day. <sighs> I come to find out that everybody uses that church. They just put the, all put their name on it. Oh. Right? So you just 
whoever you are, you, yeah, that's where you meet. Just take your turn. They didn't all show up at the same time, if that's what you're wondering. God's after the nations. Let's take it a little bit further. This is Israel's 70th anniversary as being a nation. This month, May 14th, it's Israel's 70th birthday. Now, if you add up all the meanings of the number 70, all the symbology and all the meanings, it basically means that there is going to be a breaking out of a generation of slavery and bondage to a system. There's going to be a restoration movement. There's going to be a movement towards salvation. There's going to be a movement towards the restoration of the presence and power of God. There's going to be salvation activated again to all nations, right? The tabernacle of David was free access to all nations. Free access to all nations. So we see the significance of this number 70. It's incredible. It's happening this year. It's Israel's 70th birthday. 70th day as a nation recognized by the world. Another amazing thing that is significant to you and I is that the U.S. Embassy now is in Jerusalem and is operational in Jerusalem for the first time in history. It happened when? This month. Because President Trump declared a while back that Jerusalem is the capital of Israel. That was good for us. And so now the U.S. Embassy is in Israel. Now that's very significant. Very, very significant. Because now the, the stakes have gone up. Now the game is way up over who is going to sit on the throne in Jerusalem. Right? It's the Antichrist ambition to be set on the throne in the new temple, declaring himself as God, receiving worship, right? And that's why it's such a contention over Israel. People go, how come this little tiny nation, how come everybody hates it? Because it's the throne of the king of kings. It's the highest throne in all the planet. That's where the power wants to be. They want to have the throne of the king of kings. They can't have it, but they want it. Right? That's why the contention. Why? Because the king of kings said, that's my city, that's my throne. So men, mortal men, try to go for it. And even a fallen angel is going to go for it unsuccessfully. 2018 also has significance. Why? Because of 2018. I like the number, right? Eight means what? New beginnings. You get in this big picture of the numbers. Restoration, liberation, new beginnings. Things are changing. Everything's lining up. I'm telling you that I believe this year is going to be a year of birthing of new things, of manifestation of things kept in the wings for a long time, of a new generation coming, new styles of evangelism, new moves of God, uh, movings of the Holy Spirit like we have not seen, expressions of things that are going to be new. So I'm telling you ahead of time, do not try to make this move of God like the last move of God. Let this move of God be this move of God. Please. We have been in meetings, these, my amigos, we've seen stuff, we've seen moves of God, but we've seen moves of God try to be held onto and made like old moves of God and they stop the move of God. Let the move of God be the move of God. Let it be its own move of God. Don't try to make it into your move, let God have his move. And I promise you, it'll be powerful and enduring. It won't just be a revival. It will be a restorative move of God that will continue for a long time to come. That's what I'm looking for. Hallelujah. It's going to be good. Watch the firebrands come up. Watch those that have been, you know, hidden become known. Watch all the ones that God has had set aside Watch all the crazy people like me that have been 
a rebellious lamb. They finally got tamed, maybe a little bit enough to where I can be usable in what's coming. Right? Yeah. God reminds me, he said, I don't have that rod and staff for nothing. You, you know, right? Do you know what happened to bad lambs? They had actually, a shepherd would break their leg and carry them around until they healed just so they'd bond. So they quit running away. I don't want a broken leg. <laughs> You break your leg, and what are you going to do? You go to the hospital. How'd you break your leg? Holy Spirit. <laughs> Come down and broke my leg. <laughs> my leg. I need some angel morphine. <laughs> Cure me. <laughs> oh, mercy. I have this little movement <laughs> I'm just going to say maybe it'll catch and maybe it won't I, it really don't matter but it struck me because I woke up with this dream of this round circle on the side of a building with the number 35 in it and that's the only thing on the building and uh, so I went inside the building and on the front of the building it had four letters up above the platform it said S E N T. Sent. So I'm like, how does that work? So I did the math. Jesus sent out the 70. Two by two. That means he sent them to 35 places. So I said to myself, and I made a mental note, wrote it on my prayer desk, Lord, show me the 35 places I am to be praying for, the 35 places I am to be focusing on, because you said, lift up your eyes, they're white unto harvest. You said, pray the Lord a harvest to send labors, come on, into the harvest. Where's my 35 places that you want me to pray for and pay attention? Who's the 35 people? Let me put it in those terms. Right? Who are they? I promise you, you get tangled up with the Lord and you start praying for somebody's salvation. You and the Lord start working together on it and you're true to the flow, it'll mess you up. Because I'm going to tell you, God's going to set you up and set them up and somehow they're going to get saved. They are. Now, I do know about those people that hold out 20 years. I'm like, Lord, oh, you are my shepherd. I shall not want to wait 20 years. <laughs> oh, come on. Pick 35. The 35 movement. The 35 two by twos. I don't know. There used to be a square dance song about that or something. I don't know. Maybe they were on to something. What's that, you know, two by two thing besides a board? Oh, that's a two by four. Anyway. I believe we're in for an incredible time. I believe the number of 70 is significant to us this year because of Jerusalem, because of Israel. For, more, for no more than that. Because the feast all have the hidden number of 70. How can it be that we come to one year where the hidden number of 70 is in the Feast of Tabernacles, the Feast of Pentecost, and we're at a 70-year anniversary? Come on, that's three times seven. Come on. There, that's, I mean, there's just seven, seven, seven. There's something significant beyond what I can articulate to you that I see and feel that's going to break forth this year. And I don't want to be left out of it. If I'm not supposed to be out of it, I want to be in it. And if I can't be vested in it in any other way except praying for my 35 places or my two by two, I'll get a prayer partner. We'll start praying, to, you know, for two by two for something, right? The idea is be sent. Be sent. That should be, you know, our creed. Be sent. Okay, so... How do I join this church? You can't. You got to be sent. What does that mean? Can I come here? Once in a while, but you got to be sent. You're coming in to go out. You're not coming in to stay. You're coming in to go out. 
Now that would be a new church planning scheme. You're coming in to go out. You're here to be sent. To be equipped and to be sent. Right? When I was a pastor, every time we got to 200, you know what we did? We took 50 out and had them go plan another church. Never made it over 250. Why? Too many people, too hard to handle, too crazy. Forget it. I'm not no mega church pastor. I'm a mega get your butt out of here and go get something done for the kingdom. People get way too comfortable when there's too many people. People disappear when there's too many people. You can't be found when there's more than 200 people. Was Joe here today? I don't know. There was like so many people I didn't see. You get a church of 200. Was Joe here today? Ten people say, no, we're going to go get him right now and find out what's up. <laughs> see, I, uh, that was my motto. And we ended up planting five churches out of one church. I like that, don't you, in, in 10 years? That's how you roll. I like that. At least that's how I, I like to do it. I don't like people being comfortable in their spiritual self-measurement. When we ever come back to the realization that we're here to be a bunch of crazy radical Christians with a message and ability to transform the world, to shut down evil and to save the lost, to crush the wicked and tear down strongholds. If we ever get that back into our spirit, man, that that is why we're here to spread the gospel, to, to release the love of God, to lift up the poor, to tear down the strongholds, to expose the evil. Come on, if we ever get that back in our spirit of who we are as church and sons and daughters of God, there will be a holy revolution and a holy revelation. I think it's coming. If nothing else, out of sheer boredom, we're like, please, Lord, give me something. Now, if you're being a lamb right now like me, enjoy it because it's not going to last that long. It'll last long enough, but not long enough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. My wife and I have this thing that we've been telling the Lord about this decade of destiny. You go, what's a decade of destiny? Well, we're both 60-ish. <laughs> so for 10 years, from 60 to 70, we want to be more fruitful and more effective for the kingdom than we were all the other years prior to that time. Why? Because we have life experience. Because we've learned how to walk with the Lord. We've learned how to price them. We've learned how to do, you know, things of the kingdom. We've been knocked down, beat up, sheep bite, and we were pastors for a lot of years. We bit back. It's all good. No, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> we want to do something significant. I'm not wanting to just be shut off and shut down. By the way, you can't shut down the calling of God. I had somebody say, well, why don't you just retire from the ministry? I'm like... You, you, what? Retire. Now let's talk about it. You, I can't shut that off. You do not retire from a calling. Right? There's some way that you can live it out. You can retire from a job, but you cannot retire from a calling. It just lives in you, right? Until your last breath, there's some kind of unction to function in there, and you just go with it. Right? Now, I'm of the opinion that the older wine is a little better. Come on. Right? We have something good to offer, something aged, something of good quality, something that, that, that it's out there. So I believe we're, we're going to really have a good decade of destiny. And I believe that the church right now is coming into a time, a decade of destiny. I really do. I believe we're going to see a powerful move of God, at least for a few years, unprecedented in what we've seen anywhere on the earth in our generation and time. I believe we're going to walk in it and experience it. And I believe if you're ready, you'll step right into it. But I also know that we're all in different stages and times, you know, with the Lord. Like I'm going through this weirdest time in my Christian life I never believed. I mean, I've been a Christian forever, and I never, ever thought I'd be like 
you know, not knowing what to do with myself. But it happens. And I've discovered it's a good thing because I found out things about God that I never knew about God when you just rest and when you get refreshed by him and when you're taken care of by him and when the little things are taken care of by him. I mean, things that you're, and it happens, you go, Lord, you just did that. That's, I mean, that goes, yeah, taking care of you. Like, that is so awesome. So awesome. I mean, you get to, you know, God's a warrior. He's powerful. He's sovereign. But I'll tell you, he is so personal that he will walk with you every moment of your day and make himself aware to you every moment of your day if you'll allow him. That's how present he wants to be with us. How wonderful he is. How close he is. I mean, it's just a wonderful thing. So for me, he had to kind of, you know, dial me back so I could enjoy that and find that out about him. And I'll be honest with you, I just needed a little time out. I did. You know, you ask these guys, I mean, how many miles that we, you know, if you're on the conference thing, I mean, you, you're rolling. Actually, you're flying. Pretty soon you can't tell if you're flying or rolling, but you're going. You know you're in trouble when you get to the gate and you're like, now where, where was I going? You did that? Oh, my gosh. I, I didn't. I was in Utah, but I couldn't remember where I was going. I was in a hurry to get to the gate. And I was running. Huh? Where you came yeah, or where you come from. Yeah. Oh, I've done that. <laughs> yeah, people say, where have you been? I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I really enjoyed the time. Yeah. It was great. I, I think that barbecue is awesome. <laughs> I'm running up to this gate, and I'm getting up there, and I'm like, damn. Look at my ticket. Oh, yeah, that's where I'm going. Hey. That's when you need a break, my friends. That's when you need a break. Hallelujah. Are you ready for a 70? You ready to go two by two? You ready for your 35? Everybody's got to go home tonight and say, Lord, who are my 35 prayer points, targets, my people, my, what's your plan? Could you imagine if all of us mobilize on 35? Oh, could you imagine if two or more of you agree concerning anything, it shall be done by my Father in heaven? That's why I sent them out two by two, because they agreed. That means they had unlimited, unrestricted ministry. Were two or more agree, right? Anything? 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 Don't you like when God sends you out with unlimited ability? Unlimited, unrestricted, no quantities, no shelf life. Come on, it's not, he's not like the internet. When you use too much data, he slows you down. He's like, when you use data, he speeds it up. I love you guys. I, I just missed you guys so much. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Ah, We're dangerous when you get us all together. I can tell that, at least for me. Okay, everybody stand up. Enough of this nostalgic, wonderful stuff. Everybody doing all right? You get the message? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Home slice, you're too much. <sighs> da -da -da -da. You got some? Yeah, the whole while you were speaking, I felt like I was hearing from the Lord that um, you've not quite understood all that's going on with you, mm. that you are a prophetic parable. And the rest, duration, that's where you're headed. And that what you have been going through has been a prophetic parable of what is coming out of rest, duration. And the, the five times the seven of the 35 is grace and rest. So it's not by might and it's not by power. 
it's by my spirit, says the Lord. And what you'll be walking in, you will know that you know that you know it's got nothing to do with you, which you're going to need to feel that way because of what it will be. So there's a restoration that's going to be coming from you where you plant your foot everywhere that you plant your foot once he begins to send you out again. And your 35 is all around grace times rest equals by his spirit. Amen. I'm just humbled by the Lord. Isn't he so good? I mean, I told you he just loves me, and he does. And my sister just, thank you. That so helped me. I mean, you can tell him up here just trying to be honest, but not really knowing. Yeah. Because uh, I feel like if it happens to someone else, wouldn't you like, you know, kind of know? <sighs> so much of my Christian life, as many of you, you just kind of, you know, <laughs> learn as you go. Right? Yeah. So, so anyway. Hallelujah. Well, I feel tonight like we need to make some decrees about 70. I think, I believe we need to bless Israel. I, I believe we need to decree the release and the remantling of the evangelistic body because Billy Graham and Oral Roberts are now passed. And I believe there's a mantle that needs to be taken up for evangelism. Are you with me? And I, I believe there's a new um, group of uh, apostles, prophets. Yes, thank you, Home Slice, pastors and teachers that need to be raised up. <clears throat> but I believe that this is a year, more than anything, where you're going to see the birthing of many new things that are going to mark, to frame, to identify this coming next season of time in this generation. It's not going to be the old, it's going to be the new. Right. And we have to be so careful not to try to make this new move of God like an old move of God. It needs to be the move of God. Not the move of, you name it, ABC. It's the move of God. Move of God. So this year, be sent. Let that be your model. Be sent. Every time you walk up and you look at the front of the altar, or you look at your prayer, prayer closet, just look up there and see the words sent. And just say, I'm sent. And by the way, if you believe that, Jesus said, all authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Therefore, go. He delegated you full authority and power to go in his name to make disciples and set captives free. You have unlimited, unrestricted power and authority. So go as a lamb. Go vulnerable, but yet go supernatural. Be as wise as a serpent, yet gentle as a dove. Go knowing that the Lord is your shepherd, so you will not want. Go in that way. Let's become lambs again. Lambs of God. Let's become his lambs that he's able to send out among the wolves. Let's be sendable. Let's not be defensive. Let's not be you know, those who have the argument, let's go out as lambs, sent ones of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. 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 So, Father, we pray tonight that there would just be a release over the body of Christ and over these gathered tonight, a release of the mantle of evangelism carried once by great men of faith and of portion all through the generations but most recently those mantles of evangelism and, and, and kingdom movement of two great giants that defined our generation uh, recently past those last ones Billy Graham and Oral Roberts and even the early ones from the latter rain and the ones after the latter rain all of those great giant men and women of God Lord, now it's our time, it's our mantle, it's our mandate to go after that 35. So Lord, give us the 35 tonight, I pray. Give us our targets. Give us that which you'd have us to be involved in so that we can have faith and boldness to be about what you're calling us to. Let us be the sent ones again, Lord. 
Let us just begin to ask one another, are you sent? And where has God sent you? And what is God doing? Let there begin to be a stirring up of that passion and purpose for evangelism. Released again amongst us, moving powerfully in the midst of us. Let our hearts begin to feel what the Father feels for the lost. Let, let the, the crying and, the, and the, the desperation of those who need you come back into our ears. Let us not shut out those who need you and turn away from those looking for you. Give us eyes, we pray tonight, white for the harvest. Send us into those places that you have planted. And then teach us how to sow. Teach us how to harvest. Teach us how to bring in this harvest, Lord. This mighty harvest, this unprecedented harvest, this worldwide outpouring of the Holy Spirit, this revelation of the kingdom of God, revelation of the sons and daughters of God. Let it come forth in power and might now, Lord, we pray. Don't withhold anything from us now, Lord. We just want to go. We're hungry. We're thirsty for you, for your presence for your purpose and for your power. Lord, we want to see your power manifest. We want to be amazed by your power. We want to be amazed by your mercy and your grace. We want to behold the beauty and the glory and the majesty of our God among the midst of us. We want to be carriers of your glory and of your love and your power. Lord, we want to be drenched with the presence and the fragrance of encounters with you. We want to work with your angels, God. And we pray to you, Lord of the harvest tonight, to send out laborers into the harvest. Send us, Lord. Now, Lord, tonight in the name of Jesus, we bless Israel. We bless your people, Israel. We bless that nation. We bless What's your blessing, Father, in Jesus' name? We call Israel blessed of the Lord. We pray for her salvation. We pray for her redemption. We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Let peace be upon your people. Let salvation be upon your people. Let the Lord be revealed to his people. And Lord, we know that this time of Pentecost and this time of tabernacles is coming even this month. So Lord, we just commit ourselves to lock into these places, these feasts, understanding the 70 and begin to pray for the nations. Hallelujah, pray. for the nations. Begin to intercede and lift up the name of the nations before you, God. Begin to bring the offering of the sacrifice of praise and of prayer and intercession for every nation and every place, every tribe, every tongue, Lord. Let them know the Lord and let them be saved and let every nation come before you again. Let this 70 years of Israel's existence, these 70 sacrifices, God, of tabernacle, these 70 nations that were present at the outpouring, God, let the nations again see the outpouring and hear the outpouring and experience the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. God, raise up your church. Continue to build us. Re-engage us, God. And send us out, we pray, as those lambs. Hallelujah. The Lamb of God sending out the lambs. The lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Lord Jesus, we do want to be your lambs that you can send. We want to be sendable, Lord. Do that work in our hearts that make us sendable. Whatever we need to be sendable, God. Whatever we need to engage the Great Commission, your word, so your word can live and be alive and be manifested so your glory can come, so your name can be exalted, so every knee would bow and every tongue confess that you're the Lord. Let it be so. And Father, let this house now have a mantle of evangelism come upon it. Here in Oklahoma City, let this house be known as a place to be redeemed and restored and renewed by the presence and the power of God, a loving God, a graceful God, a God of power and might. We just declare a breakthrough to new levels of influence in the city, new levels of outreach, new levels, God, of 
purpose and power, new alliances in Jesus' name, stronger, not weaker, greater, not lesser, loving and merciful and kind. Let that be upon this house and its people. Hallelujah. We bless you tonight, God, as we decree a blessing upon Israel this 70 years. So let your number 70 have its way in us and through us. And Father, I thank you for the restoration. Hallelujah. Thank you for your word. Come on, everybody give God a shout. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your anointing. Hallelujah. Amen. Take us out however you want, bro, Steve. I won't tell you tonight that if you uh, give $100 in the offering and I send you a vial of healing oil that God will bless you. I won't tell you tonight if you go $1,000, God's going to give you a great miracle because that'd be telling you something I don't know. But I will tell you the truth. The truth is that Jesus accepted donations in his ministry. And the truth is that money is a good thing for ministry. The love of money is not a good thing. But money in ministry is not only necessary, it's essential. And in Galatians chapter 6, verses 6 through 9, the inference is very clear there. The Word of God says that if a teacher of the Word of God has instructed you, and you heard that instruction and you receive that instruction as your very own and is benefiting you, then the right thing to do is to contribute to that person in that ministry. That's just as, as pragmatic as I can say it to you. God says, if you've received anything in these teachings today, then the right thing to do is to contribute to the support of that teaching. If you've received anything from the ministry of the, the singers and the musicians, anything at all, and you've made it yours as a benefit, the right thing to do is to contribute to support their ministry. And so I say to you tonight, in the name of the Lord, that same passage of Scripture, by the way, says that you only reap from what you sow. But in due time and due season, you will reap. That's the promise. And so I present to you tonight that Spirit of Life Apostolic Ministries is a place of facilitation, inspiration, revelation. And I want you to be very considerate about what you're doing tonight because they take their responsibility very seriously. How do you think these ministers get paid? by the generosity of those who give in to the fundamental and essential reality we need to support Spirit of Life, Apostolic Ministries, so we can keep having people come into this area, like Randy DeMaine, Joanne McFadder, Steve Swanson, you name them. These things don't happen just automatically. So I encourage you tonight, as you're getting ready to present your offering in this meeting this very night, this is your opportunity to actively engage in a supernatural event. When you give your seed, it's going to supernaturally come into the multiplicity of fruitfulness in Jesus' name. I want you to stand with me tonight, if you will, in the name of the Lord and Father, in the name of Jesus. Your precious Son, Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus Christ, we have access into your presence, O oh God, the intimacy of being with you. And there, Father, as we bring this offering tonight, we are walking into the intimacy of who you are. We're going through transcending time and space, and we're going into a supernatural event right now into the glory of God. And we give into this ministry with a cheerful heart, knowing that you're a God that cannot lie. And what we're giving right now will be multiplied supernaturally, and we will receive that in Jesus' name, under your glory and our benefit. In the name of the Lord, amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. You know, when 
Steve came in, Steve Swanson came in at the airport. My Steve Trail missed him at the gate. And my Steve, Stephen B, was in the car. And, and they were texting me. And I was like, let the Steves meet somewhere. <laughs> but when the three Steves converged, it was under the United sign. And Stephen means crowned. So we started out this weekend being crowned with completion in unity. And we end this night, this weekend, being crowned in glory and unity. So I would say thank you for coming, but you know, you fulfilled your assignment. And you prophets, is there any word left unsaid? If there's any song left unsung, speak now. Speak now. Okay. Going once twice okay we're going okay so praise God tomorrow morning at 10 30 if you are visiting or if you do not have a home church hey Susan if you do, or have, do not have a home church or if you're visiting then come over to Solutions in Edmond at 10 30 it's at the Edmond Community Center 28 East Main and um Joanne McFadder, Steve Swanson will be there and Ron will be giving the word. It's going to be a glorious time. I'm telling you, we're covenanted with Ron and, and Connie Wilburn and we attend their church. That's, a, that's our home church. And I'm telling you, every time we have something here, it's like the it's not the culmination, it's the increase happens there. So, just saying. And then tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, Joanne will be ministering on the Sonic stage downtown behind the Sonic, um, on the canal, huh? Headquarters. Headquarter, behind the Sonic headquarters. Do you want to come talk about Firestorm? North of Toby. You're talking to it's behind Sonic on the canal. <laughs> He's getting all these directions. It's north, north of Co Toby Keys. North of Toby Keys, down on the water. The stage is seven steps from the water. Sonic headquarters is not the Sonic restaurant. There's a fountain to the left of it, or the uh, west. There's a Duddle Bridge that connects Toby Keith over the water.